Some people ask me, do you have a favorite relic or sacred archaeological object? And my answer is usually yes, I do, besides the James Ossuary. I'm especially inclined to be interested in the Shroud of Turin. So what is the Shroud of Turin? It is clearly a burial shroud that involves a, a very interesting brownish image of a crucified man. It's a cloth that fell, was folded over the body of some crucified person. So it has both a dorsal image and a front image on it. And if you unfold the cloth, then you see both of them sort of toe to toe on this cloth. What do we really know about the Shroud of Turin? Well, we know for sure what it, where it was all the way back to the early Middle Ages. And in the early Middle Ages, there was no photography. There was no fax machine. It was BC before cell phone, before computer, etc. This much we know for sure that there was no technology to produce a negative image of a human being on a cloth at that point in time in uh, early medieval history. But that is exactly what you have on this cloth. One of the amazing things that happened in the 19th century with the rise of the technology of photography is there was an Italian uh, photographer who was allowed by the Pope to take pictures of the Shroud of Turin without a glass over it. And when he did so, and he went into the lab to develop the films and looked at the negatives, the negatives had a positive image of a human being very distinctly visible, very distinctly visible, that you could see the eyes, the mustache, the whole thing, and very spookily it looked like many of the earliest images and paintings that we have of Jesus from the early church. This have caused something of a sensation. How could a negative image of a human being been imprinted on a cloth like that in the early Middle Ages? So we were off to the races in studying whether in fact this cloth was much older. One of the theories about where the image comes from is that it is like a scorch that came from um, Hiroshima, where you actually have negative images imprinted on stone and cloth and all kinds of things because of the nuclear blast in Hiroshima. It seems to have been something like that, some kind of burst of energy imprinted this on the cloth. The image is not a painting. It's not a, a naturally produced image by any sort of human technology that we know about. It's a ghostly image on a cross of a crucified man. So when they went to study this in more detail, one of the things they did is they began looking much more closely at the details on the shroud. And when they magnified the image of the eyes, they discovered there were coins on the eyes in the image. And these coins were, wait for it, Pontius Pilate coins. That was a clue that maybe indeed this is the burial shroud of Jesus. Then when they did more detailed study of other things, traces of which they found on the cloth, they discovered that there were traces of flowers and other things that were absolutely native only to Judea and the surroundings of Jerusalem on the cloth. Then they looked at the herringbone kind of weave of the cloth and came to the conclusion that in fact it's the kind of cloth people use for burial shrouds in early Jewish and early Christian burials. So there was a strong case to be made for the Shroud of Turin being the burial shroud of Jesus. What about the blood on the cross? This was tested, it's genuine blood, it's the blood of a male that suited and fit very well. But then they did a carbon-14 test on the edges of the cloth and the carbon-14 test didn't take them any further back than the early Middle Ages. So some scholars simply concluded, well, it was somehow concocted. We don't know how it was created in the early Middle Ages as a sort of sacred relic, though it's a faux relic, uh, honoring the death of Jesus. The problem with that is there was a fire in Torino 
in the early Middle Ages that did scorch the edges of the cloth. And my suspicion is that the evidence of the carbon-14 dating is dealing with the residue of the scorch of the cloth, which was rescued by nuns from being totally burned up in the fire. That would explain why the carbon-14 dating showed a date from the early Middle Ages and not a much older date. What they have not allowed and probably shouldn't allow is a testing of the actual image itself because the scorch was around the edges of the cloth rather right than right on the image. Perhaps we will never know for sure whether in fact the Shroud of Turin is Jesus' burial shroud, but as such it certainly is a vivid depiction of what it must be like. So suppose you were to see the Shroud of Turin. Who is it do you think you're seeing? Have a look. Here's the image of a person who had a crown of thorns on his head, who has a broken nose, who has a mustache and goatee, who has all of the marks in the right places on the image such that the holes are not in the palm of his hand, but where Romans did actually crucify a person, here in this hole at the joint between the hand and the wrist here and there, and also has a stab wound in his side as well. If the picture suits, it's time to think of how we might actually have an image of the historical Jesus on the Shroud of Turin. What I would like to do in a perfect world is I would like to take a DNA sample from a sticky swab from the blood on the shroud and compare it to what we found in the James ossuary from the bones of St. James. If we've got a match, then we've authenticated two archeological items at once. There's something to think about.